Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the August 19th Chesapeake Rotary Club meeting. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today on such a lovely day. Uh, I'm going to ask Baxter Innes if he could lead us in prayer. Good. Go be in prayer, Lord. We just thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for these wonderful people. We thank you for the Rotary Club Fund. We pray that you will lead us, guide us, motivate us as we do missions, not only here locally, but around the world. We pray for your blessing on this food and on this gathering today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Anthony Draper, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'll go ahead and ask Sue Ann. I think I asked her last week, but I'll ask her again since she's the closest it can be for those who <laughs> don't have it memorized. But if you can lead us in the four way test, please. It'd be my pleasure. The four way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, First is it true? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? All right. Thank you very much. Be seated. All right, I'm going to turn it over to our Sergeant in Arms, Chuck Wilson. Thank you, Jonathan. Welcome, everyone. Good, uh, good looking group here today. So glad to see you all. Uh, well, first of all, we have one guest besides our speaker, Bill Pollard. Hello, sure. Bill. Thank you for coming, yeah. Bill. Yeah. All right. Any happy bucks here today? Happy bucks, happy bucks. Debbie? It's not a happy buck. I just wanted to make sure everybody saw the community that Ray Connors' mother passed away. Can't hear you. You can't? That's like, usually everybody goes, no. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. You can see why I was not really happy. Yeah, I understand. Um, I have a happy buck, and it should be a whole lot more, except that's all I have left after putting on our, 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 our daughter's wedding this uh, last week. We uh, actually did it at our, uh, since the Sanderling, where the wedding was supposed to happen, is not doing any events this year. So, we uh, set up this big top tent in our backyard at the, down at our Southern Shores place, and it was transformed into just the most incredible scene, uh, and we just had a, a great time. Of course, the, the DJ had to stop playing at 10 o'clock, so for entertainment after that, the bride and groom decided to jump into the pool, fully clothed, followed by about 60 other people. It was it was incredible. We had just a, a, a wonderful time. And, uh, so, anything else? Ah, Bill. I got a half a half dollars for District Governor Dewey. Twelve years ago, she was my when I was governor, she was my conference chair. And we had a record attendance, so hopefully you'll break it this year. We're sure hoping to sell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Jonathan. All right. And thank you, past District Governor Bill, for being here today. We do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to ask John Barry to come up here and give us a quick update on our art show coming up this spring. I uh, just want to let everybody know the art show is on so far, COVID uh, allowing. Uh, it's uh, May 8th and 9th. That is Mother's Day weekend. The uh, website has all been updated. We are updating the uh, Facebook page and all that stuff. And most importantly, uh, the artist registration is open. So we are taking registrations for artists. We've gotten our first six applications already. Uh, the emails went out to everybody who applied last year. 
But of the six, two of them are new people that did not apply last year. One guy from up in D.C., too. So if you have friends or acquaintances who are artists that would like to apply for what may end up being one of the first art shows we've had in this area in over a year, let them know and send them over to our website. It's chessarts.com. And get them applied so we can get them on the list. So any questions? Great. Thanks. As you know, we tried to put this event on this past May, and unfortunately COVID canceled it for us. So we are hoping to have this inaugural event coming up next May. We're very excited. Hopefully it will be going on. And with the questionable life of the wine festival this year, which is right now on life support, we're going to try to make this art festival a big event. Hopefully do some great things in the first year and build upon it for future years to come. So with that being said, I will be asking Ms. Sue Ann Hardy Bryant to please introduce our distinguished guests. And Debbie, I did hear you. Yes, I understand the wine stuff. Art Festival is still at the City Hall Plaza area to answer your question. Now, it's my uh, distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you our district governor for the Rotary Year 2021. Uh, for those of you who do not know Judy, she is a Portsmouth native, born here in, here in Virginia. But then she moved to Alabama. She finished her high school in Alabama, then went to Auburn. Where for her undergraduate, that she has both a master's in elementary ed and reading from uh, UAB, University of Alabama at Birmingham. Later, she received an executive MBA from William and Mary. So she has multiple school allegiances to deal with when we get back to college sports and athletics. Um, professionally, she has been everything from a teacher to pharmaceutical sales, and she's probably spent the last 30 years of her life in real estate. And she is currently an associate broker with Howard Hanna, uh, just like her and Sherry Mazur, uh, out in Virginia Beach. Uh, in Rotary, she has been a member of the Cape Henry Club since 1994. Uh, she has served that club in a variety of purposes, serving both as its social chair for over 20 years. Um, she has served as a club president twice, glutton for punishment. Um, had a little span of a break. She went on to serve as an assistant governor twice. She serves as a district conference chair, as you just heard from Bill, twice. And she was Rotarian of the Year in her club twice. So if things bode, she might be our first ever twice district governor. You just don't know these things, but we always, we always like to rib her about that. Um, when she's not doing rotary and she's not handling real estate, uh, she has an adorable dog. I love following on Facebook, her little Bichon, Louis Vuitton, that she dresses up and carries around, and I think you might get a sneak peek. Uh, she has two grown daughters. She has grandchildren that she's very proud of, and I'm going to let her tell you all about her goals and visions for this year, as well as a little bit more about herself. So without further ado, our district governor, Judy Copper. <laughs> glad to be here today, and I'm always glad when I get uh, my program all set up, because you never know with technology, right, if it's going to work or not. So um, here goes. Um, so happy Rotary New Year. As you know, every year in July, we change everybody in Rotary, and we get a new Rotary president, and we would get a new Rotary theme. And our theme this year is Rotary Opens Opportunities. Our president is President Holger Kanak, and he is from Germany. And Rotary Opens Opportunities. And here is a picture with Holger and his wife Susan in the middle. Uh, and on, uh, the, on the left is um, President 2018-19, Barry Rassen from Nassau, and his wife Esther. And that was Be the Inspiration, and we were truly inspired that year. And then on the right, we have last year's president, Mark Maloney, and his wife, Gay, and their theme was Rotary Connects the World. And it was a very prophetic theme in that um, Mark and his wife, Gay, traveled all over the world for the first 
over half of the year. I followed them on Facebook, and I, I saw them in a different city every day. Then suddenly, in mid-March, we are all on Zoom. And, um, but in a sense, Rotary was still connecting the world. Then, because uh, on the Zone 33, 34 calls we had every week from March until the end of June, we had speakers from all over the world. We also had a first time ever virtual international convention um, in June and July. We also had a telethon, first ever, virtual telethon in June for one hour all over the world, and it raised $500,000 in that one hour for COVID. So quite interesting. So along with Zoom came some Zoom jokes and uh, some pandemic jokes. And this little guy on the left is going to a Zoom meeting audio only, and he looks pretty rough. And then on the right, he's going to the Zoom meeting with video, and he looks like he's had a personal stylist. And of course, mid-March, we're locked up. And so this one says, the first word you see is where you're going in April. And it's nowhere. And we all know how efficient Chick-fil-A is and how inefficient our testing system has been. And so somebody said that the whole world would, or country would be tested by midnight if Chick-fil-A was running the drive through testing centers. And then somebody else invented Zoom call bingo. So, Because if you've been on a lot of Zoom calls, you know that there are some things that people say over and over like, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Or there's your cat. So Holger Ganak, Rotary Opens Opportunities. Here's Holger and his wife, Susan. Uh, they are at home in Germany. And um, they, uh, Holger started, has, he became active in Rotary by doing a lot of stuff with youth. And um, he and his wife uh, worked with the youth um, uh, student exchange program. And Rotary has, like the first 116 years of Rotary, Rotary didn't change at all. And now, over the last four or five years, Rotary has started to make some changes. And so he didn't go up the route that a lot of the other presidents did. You have to do this, you have to do that. His was really strong on the, on the youth exchange. And he's really big on Rotaract and Interact. I got to know Holger, President Holger and his wife um, over a two-week period. One, the first week was in Atlanta at Getz, and Getz is governor-elect training. And um, Rotary is serious about training their governors. Uh, you, you go, you start two and a half years ahead of time, and you do this governor-elect training, and you train with the other members of your zone group. And at, we, we zone 33 and 34 train together, and there are 31 of us that have been training together for two and a half years. And when we started, President Barry Rasson was president of Rotary, and he was from Nassau, and Nassau was, uh, had, a, um, had a national bird that was the flamingo. And of all of the ones in 33, 34 that you see here were all up and down the East Coast, all of Florida, and the islands. So suddenly we became the flamingos. So there are the flamingos. We have our pink shirts on with flamingos on the sleeves. We actually got a shirt for both Holger and Susan. They don't have them here. Here they, we are on the last day of training in Atlanta. There's President Holger. We had some blow-up flamingos that were looking pretty rough by the end of, of the week, and he's messing around with them. Um, these are some of the um, flamingo governors from the Carolinas. And at Carolina's Pets, they had these doors somebody built, and they had a great photo op there. The good news is that if you come to our conference, and if you make it big enough, we'll be built, um, you can get your picture taken with these doors, because a guy in my club is building some doors for us. So we'll have them in the first week of November. Here's some flamingos at work. They're getting ready to jump on Zoom calls. This flamingo has gotten blocked. And this flamingo has gotten really blocked. Here we have Kirk, who's from Georgia, and he has got on the man's traditional Zoom outfit. Business on the top, 
party on the bottom and he has thrown in a flamingo float for good measure. The second time I got to meet and spend some time with uh, President Holger and Susan was in the International Assembly uh, in January in San Diego. And it's been in San Diego for a number of years. They're now going to be moving it to Orlando this year. And um, it's where all, all of the DGEs at the time were DGs now from all over the world come. And it's 532 of them this year. All of their spouses and partners, a lot of top rotary leaders, a lot of training leaders. There were 1,200 people there. And Bill knows, Bill has been before. And um, those are the two towers of, of the hotel, it's a huge hotel. And um, in between were all the meeting rooms and, and that sort of thing. So it started on January 19th with a reception and dinner. And then the next morning, President Holger announced the theme. And this is always met with a lot of excitement and balloons and confetti. And you can see everybody's got their cell phones up in the air taking Holger's picture, right? And everybody's texting because they want to be the first one to get the news of what the new, you know, to spread the news of what the new theme is. So, Holger said, Rotary's not just a club that you join. It's an invitation to endless opportunities. And he said it, it opens opportunities to serve in a project as big and historic as Enpolio now, or as small a project as planting a tree. Everything we do opens another opportunity for someone somewhere. And um, Bill Pollard likes to talk about um, the movie It's a Wonderful Life. And I think this is a similar thing here um, that as Rotarians, and when we do good in the world, we don't really know all the good things, all the impact that we have. And it's just like when George uh, in that movie thinks that his life is worthless and he's going to go jump off a bridge. And Clarence the Angel tells him that, um, that he has done all these things to change people's lives. And I think as Rotarians, we do that and we do good in the world. Um, here's a photo op with President Holger and Susan. Um, <coughs> President Holger asked the DGs to take four messages to the club. He's very specific about these. I've heard him make the same speech three times. So he's not just saying, oh, one time do this, one time do that. He means it. And the first is the uh, district is going to be working on creating innovative club models and will need your support. And um, you can help expand our reach by creating a satellite club or a community-based rotor app club. And what we have to help you now is an innovative club advocate team. Say that three times fast. And what on it, uh, we're, it's headed by Alex Ritchie, Sue Carter's our membership chair. We've got Kenny James, we've got Diane Gordon, we've got Neva Lynn. They will help you if you want to open any kind of new Rotary Club or any kind of membership ideas. And they have a goal of five new clubs this year. Hope they can do it and they can use your help. And they say, do you know anybody who's left Rotary? Do you know anyone in your community that would make a good Rotarian but can't come to the meetings? We can help. And contact Alex Ritchie if, if you do. Second message. Each club should host at least one strategic meeting each year. And Rotary's, we're going to talk a little bit about the strategic plan. But you look at um, where will my club be in five years? What value can we bring our members? choose somebody to lead that effort. And we did this uh, with at Prepats with the president elects and the district leadership. We divided into groups and talked about the strategic plan and we talked about how we can bring the strategic plan down to the club level and implement it. Third message, select new members carefully. Holger feels that um, people, Rotarians, leave their club usually when the club doesn't meet their expectations. So he says, look at the member. Did they fit your club? Did the club fit them? And he also says there's no wrong age to become a Rotarian. We've talked a lot about young people, and young people are important. You know, we, we don't, don't want all older people, but there's no wrong age to be a Rotarian. 
and these Rotarians are very engaged, so that's what we want in our club. Uh, fourth message, uh, continue your club efforts in Polio Now by donating to, to it and also by holding a World Polio event. World Polio Day is October 24th. We're going to have a district event that's virtual. You can have a club of them. You know, do the purple pinky and take donations and all that kind of stuff. And what he said is, we must fulfill the promise we made to the children of the world. And I think that's a beautiful statement. And I think as most of you know, the reason we do the Purple Pinky Day is because when the children are immunized, they paint their pinky purple so that we'll, they'll know that that child has been immunized. And at our, um, at our international um, uh, assembly, we had two, um, two directors and an incoming director. And uh, here we have outgoing Rotary Vice President and Director David Stovall, his wife Kim Waters, who is also a past district governor. On the right is David with his dog, my man Max, who is a therapy dog. But David has on a different kind of Zoom outfit. That is the traditional men Zoom installation outfit. And what you do with that is you wear the tuxedo on the top and I'm gonna cut the grass on the bottom. And here we have Director Peter Kyle and his wife Margaret, Director Stephanie Urchick, who is chair of the Strategic Planning Committee. She is also chair of the Executive Committee for the Board of Directors. She's quite a smart lady. Um, Stephanie um, headed the Strategic Plan, as I said earlier, for 116 years, Rotary didn't change anything. And then we started thinking, what can we do that to stay modern, uh, to keep up with today, to get new members? How can we grow? And so they, they ask everybody. They ask Rotarians, they ask non-Rotarians. They say, what do you want to see in a club? What do you not want to see in a club? And from that, they put together a vision statement, which is a beautiful vision statement. And it's together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. And that's really beautiful when you think of it. And it has four parts. Uh, the first is to increase our impact, eradicate polio, focus on our programs and offerings, improve our ability to achieve and measure our impact. We're trying to measure things like volunteer hours at the 10 million meal program. We're in polio now. Uh, expand our reach, grow and diversify our membership, create new channels into Rotary, build Rotary's openness and appeal, build awareness of our impact and brand. And here um, at International Assembly, we had these small groups every day. We had like two of them each day where we broke up into groups with people from all over the world, fellow DGEs at the time where we shared ideas. So this is a true picture of diversity. This is creating new channels into Rotary. We've got our doors. We've got our People of Action campaign for impact and brand. And in enhance participant engagement, support clubs, better engage their members, develop a participant-centered approach, offer new opportunities for personal and professional connection, and provide leadership development and skills training. So here, I see this, it, this could be a, a women in Rotary slide, but it can also show professional development. It can also show leadership development because um, in this picture, I'm area governor, Kathy beside me is president, past district governor Diane Hageman is doing the installation, and then beside her is Lori Asher, who is public relations and now is president. So it shows the progression. Um, also, uh, we are going to be doing RLI virtually, Rotary Leadership Institute. We are a forerunner in this field. Um, the rest of our group is not doing just 7,600. How many people have taken RLI? Okay, this is great. This is an opportunity for those of you who are not. Part one will be taught on um, October 10th and 11th virtually on Zoom, uh, it'll be $25 instead of $95. You go nine to 12 on Saturday and two to five on Sunday. So uh, you need to sign up by, um, by uh, 
the end, the last day of the month. Very good opportunity to do this without having to travel and with very little expense. Will they send out an email invite for that? Excuse me? Will they send out an email invite for that? Yes. Yes, we'll be doing that. And we'll, we'll, have, um, we'll have it put up. I, I don't know if we've got it yet on that TV or not, but if not, it's going to be real soon. We're not just in the process of, of finishing that. But thank you for your question. Lastly, increase our ability to adapt. And how many people think that Rotary has increased their ability to adapt this year? I do, yeah. Rotary isn't canceled. It's just different. And here's Brenda Mill with um, social distancing and an outside installation. Here is James City County and all the rest of us also on Zoom. Here is my friend Harry in Maryland, and he also has on the man's traditional Zoom outfit. Uh, they're, they're doing a hybrid district officer uh, installation. And on the right, River City's doing a socially distanced picnic. And here's some history. We have the first woman to be named Rotary President nominee. Jennifer Jones from Canada, and she is a very, very sharp lady, and so a lot of us are very happy that, that Jennifer has been chosen, and, and she's also a very kind and nice person. I've had the opportunity to talk with her a little bit, and, and she's, she's a very kind person. Rudder was founded in 1905, but our core values remain the same. Uh, they are fellowship. Leadership. Uh, this is my grandson Tanner. Two years ago, when he was in middle school, he was an interact, and he was chosen as interactor of the year. So Tanner is starting his leadership early. Integrity, diversity, all the people of the world, all the Rotarians of the world. Service, service above self. Here we have Hampton Roads adopt the highway, doing it during COVID with masks. We have other Rotarians on the right passing out um, food and supplies during COVID. <coughs> of course, Rotary's always had six areas of focus. Uh, we know that when we do our district grants, we always have to pick an area of focus or sometimes more than one. Yes. <coughs> now, after a lot of asking, Rotary has said yes, and we now have a new area of focus, and that is the environment and that is available next year for funding. And this is a nice little chart of the now seven areas of focus. And back to the conference. Uh, we are gonna have the conference uh, the first week, we end in uh, November. Uh, it's at the new uh, Marriott Oceanfront, Virginia Beach, beautiful facility. We've been talking for two and a half years. It says we're built, this conference so big, we're building it from the ground up. We actually went on two hard hat tours, which were kind of fun, and now it's all finished. Um, here is the hotel, gorgeous. We have rates of 129 a night, which is fabulous for this place. I had a Rotarian from Richmond tell me last week that he had been the weekend before and the rates started at 400. 129. There's the hotel, the ad in the paper. Uh, Pastor to Governor Jane Sullivan and I went and had lunch at the restaurant Toulouse and I took some pictures. This is the lobby. This is Toulouse, the restaurant. Felt very safe. Social distancing, mask, Toulouse. That's where we sat. You can see the beach. They also have outside seating. And here is a flyer that Lori Asher did for us with showing some of the nice areas of the hotel. So we will also have a virtual element if you cannot attend. But um, we hope that next time you would like to attend. And in conclusion, um, this is our Rotary flag of opportunity. Rotary opens opportunities. Rotarians give back. Rotarians are kind and practice kindness to others. Rotarians live by the four-way test. And number five, will it be fun? And these guys look like they're having a good time. And the family of Rotary. And this is from my family to your family. This is my oldest daughter, Emily, who's sitting in the front seat, not driving at the time, but <laughs> taking a picture. I was in the back a number of years ago. The two kids are back there, and they are acting goofy.
be like this. And um, from my family to your family, this is my youngest daughter, Liz, and her husband, Andy, and their brand new puppy they just got, Cilantro. And Cilantro has just met my dog, Louie, this week, and apparently they're chasing each other all over the yard because Louie is, is staying with them while I'm on the road. And there is my dog, Louie, who is joining Rotary as a mascot, and he's got his Rotary shirt on. And as Rotarians, together we connect, and this is from our People of Action campaign, and together we connect. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you all so much, and if anybody has any questions or comments, now's the time. Over in front of the camera here. Where now? <coughs> Just so the camera can pick you up. It's oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the camera right here? Oh, no, this is my camera. Right oh, oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> hi, everybody. So basically, I'm sorry that uh, I was over to the side. Anybody? Oh, okay. I'm at the beginning of your presentation, you showed an international Zoom meeting. Something I've never thought of before. Obviously, we're a worldwide organization. Do most of these folks know English? Well, I think that, you know, English is more of a universal language than, than any other. Um, you know, um, on the Zoom meetings, I would say that, that most of the people probably are in English. Um, the, some of them I showed you are from Zoom 33 and 34, and we had a lot of big meetings there, and, and those were mainly people, you know, from the United States, but there were also people from around the world, but yes, most of them did speak English. As far as the International Assembly goes, um, we, um, we had all these headphones, and some of the speakers were, you know, in all different languages, German, Spanish, um, and we put the earphones on it, they had all these translators. On the, um, on the international convention and also the COVID one, it was mainly spoken in English. I do not know if it was translated, you know, in different countries. It probably was, is my guess. But as far as Zone 33 and 34 goes, we, um, the biggest Zoom call we had was 491 people. We also had it on Facebook Live. And that was actually 491 of, you know, being able to see the people. And um, so, and that was when Hulk, President Holger installed all of all 31 flamingos as, uh, as as district governor. So, I don't know that I totally answered your question. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Judy. Um, for those who did not know, Judy will be meeting with members of the board directly after this meeting, so board members do not go away. We'll be meeting across the way, uh, across the hall over there. Uh, next week, we will have our chief of police, uh, Kelvin Bryant, speaking. Uh, other than that, hopefully we are going to get some sort of confirmation in the next few days about wine festivals, so I will keep everybody posted concerning that. Uh, is there anything else anybody needs to say or bring up for the good of Rotary? If not, we are adjourned. <laughs>